So this lesson showing you how you can use the URL fetch app, where we're making a fetch request to a URL. The first example is going to be connecting to the google.com website, returning back the content from the website, and then outputting that HTML content into a web app. So producing the Google website and just outputting the content from the Google website dynamically. The next project is going to be connecting to a web API and we're using the random user API, making a request, returning back results, and then using the results from the API. So the API results look like this within a JSON format, and we're going to be generating the content from that API and returning it back, creating a spreadsheet with the user's first, last country and email. So that's all coming up in this lesson. The URL fetch service allows scripts to access resources by fetching web URLs. We're going to be making a connection using fetch and then returning back the results of the request. And we're using the class, the URL fetch app. So this is in Google Apps Script Utilities service. And this is a resource that allows us to communicate with hosts over the internet. So let's go ahead and we're going to create a function. And I'm just going to call this function get data. We're going to be making a request to a web URL. You can make a simple request to a URL and then return back the response object. So let's set that up as the response and then use the URL fetch method and then make a request to a URL. Let's select the URL. In this case, we're going to just use the Google main Google website connecting to the www.google.com. And that's going to be the URL that we're making the fetch request to. And within the logger log, we want to return back the text content of the response object. So let's get the content text from the response and run the get data function. Going to have to accept permissions since this is the first time the code is using this service select it and there's the fetch request connect to an external service using the example project that's been created and this is the account that the permissions are going to be added to so just go ahead and we're going to allow that and that's going to return back the content from the web page so i'm going to take that content and i'm going to return it within the get data so we're just going to be returning back the content and then let's create a web app using do get for the default for the web app. And we'll create a variable first called hello world. And in order to output hello world within our web app, we could return it using the content service method and then creating the text output from the HTML. So we don't have any HTML yet, but we'll convert this into HTML. So now we've got another function called do get, and this is the default for creating a web app. And what we want to do is we want to return back and output the hello world into the web app. In order to set the web app up, you go to deploy and set it up as a new deployment. And under the select type, select web app and give it a name, a description, who the app is going to be executed at and who is going to have access to the app. If you select only myself, that means that the web URL is only going to be available to the account that's logged in and also executing the app. You can also select anyone with a Google account. That means that anyone with their Google account needs to be logged in and anyone is just an open URL that anyone with the URL can go and view. And then once you've set up the description and you're ready to go, hit the deploy of the web app and under the web app, click the URL and you're going to see the output being generated. Instead of outputting it as text, let's update this to output as HTML. So instead of returning back the content service, use the return and use the HTML service. So this allows us to output content as HTML. And we saw that when we got the data that was being returned back as content within HTML content. So we want to create out HTML output from the results of HTML and save that. You can also deploy it as a new deployment, select the manage deployments, redeploy the existing deployment, or you have another option to do the test deployments. 
So this gives you a developer option where you've got the deployment and this is going to be whatever the new updated live code is. So there we're outputting the result as HTML. And we want to get the data from the request instead of getting the HTML output. So make an update to get the data returned back and go back into the developer version of the web app. And you're going to see that what's being loaded is the content from the Google web page that's being returned back from the fetch request. So the reason that we don't have the styling and the links look, the images are not there is because when it's returning back from the fetch for the Google website, those links are probably relative to the web page. And that's why when we're getting the content from the website, we're not going to have the relative links. We're only going to have the absolute links values. And that's why we're missing some of the styling and images within the output. Let's try another example of making a fetch request. And this time we're going to be going over and using the random user ME. So this is a random user API where you can make a request and return back JSON data. And this is the result for the request. You can also specify the number of results that you want to return back. So in this case, if you want to return back 10 results, you can do that as well. So we'll copy the web URL and we'll create a sec, another function and we'll call it get users create a URL variable, and that's going to be connecting to the random user ME. And let's also make the results dynamic. So set it up as 10 and concatenate out the results value. So that way we can change and update the number of results that we're returning back using the fetch request. So we'll do the response as well, and then return back using the URL fetch to the URL that we've just listed. So that's the random user results. And within the logger log, let's output the response for the results. And we want to get the response back as get content. So setting the response and get the content text return back within the results. I'm also going to update this to just have the one result or we'll just have two results and add in the fetch request there. So run the get users and that returns back the string value of the JSON data. So selecting out the results object from within the result get content text. And this, as we saw within the log, so this is being returned back as a string value. So let's turn it back as a usable JSON object. So we can use the JSON parse method in order to parse it into a usable JSON object. And we'll log that into the console. So that way we can begin to make use of the results that are being returned back within the object. So let's run the get user function. And there we've got the results that are returned back. So if we want to see only the JSON results, and that returns back an array of results, and that means that we can loop through those. And as we saw that we are making a request for two results. So selecting the JSON results, and then using the for each to return back each item that's within the result. And we'll log out each individual user item within the log. So save that and run the get users. So that gives us two of the users that are being returned back. And if we were to get the name, now that's within an object format, we can get the name of that item. So if we want the user name, we can select it from item name object and return back just the username. And this is also going to be within an object format. And then we can select out the last, the first, and the title. So let's construct the user value and I'm using the back ticks so the template literals and selecting the item and I'm actually going to shorten this to just to you so it's going to be a little bit shorter to write the code so you title and then there's the you first and this is the object data that's coming from the request to the API where we're getting the data back from the random user API so the same thing that we see here, except we're selecting the name object and returning back the results. And right now we're just simply logging them into the console. 
So there we've got the user results. And let's actually output the user as a string value. So those gives a, that gives us the users. And then of course we can create a spreadsheet and populate this information into a spreadsheet. So let's do that. Where once we're generating the data, let's create a sheet. And it's gonna be a brand new sheet. So using the spreadsheet app and then create. And I'm just gonna call it users. And as we loop through and return back the users, we're gonna append the sheet data. So let's uh, do one row where we're appending the row for a heading. And we can track out the first name, track out the last name. And this needs to be within an array format. So just wrapping it within the array structure. And then uh, now as we loop through each one of the users, we can also take the sheet and append row and then add the data into the spreadsheet. So save that and we'll run it. And then now we can go into our drive. There's our user's spreadsheet and open that up and there's the users that are being populated. Let's look at some other values that we can get from that user information. We're gonna get the user country. So select that and I'm just gonna use an L for location, going back to the random user, so our location within location we've got an object street city state and country so selecting the item location and then country value will return back the country for it and adding that in appending it to the next row so that's going to be the location country value and let's uh, take a look at one more value that we can get so we've got latitude, longitude, we've got a time zone, as well as an email. So let's select out the email. And this is just going to be a direct value within the email object. So we can select it under the item email. So give the heading an email. And using item email, we'll return back that string value. So we'll run that. And then we'll see what we get within the results of the drive. So there's our new file that was just created and now we've got the first name last name country and email and this is all coming from the random user api so see how this works if we make a selection and if we do 10 results and if we do 10 results so it still should generate the spreadsheet and in this time we're going to be populating it with 10 users so those are first name last names country and email addresses for the users so that's how you can use the Google Apps Script in order to connect to different web pages, return back content from the pages, as well as connect to an API and get the results back from an API and even populate them within a spreadsheet dynamically.